thank you for, for joining us and welcome to the second in the series of webinars which are focused on the domestic market. My name is Sharon Scott, I'm a Tourism NI mentor and I specialise in working with the small tourism businesses across Northern Ireland, particularly around the area of clustering and experience development. So I'm going to facilitate uh, today's webinar and also the live question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Today, I'm joined by Connor Kavanagh, Consulting Director from Genesis, who led on the preparation of the domestic tourism strategy. This was launched on the 23rd of June, and many of you here today will have uh, tuned into the webinar, which he presented back on Thursday, the 25th of June. So in this webinar, the second in, the, in a series of webinars around the domestic strategy, we'll start to really unpack it a bit more. We'll look into more detail at key elements of the, the pillars, but most importantly, and in the early stages, we'll start to, to relate it to the, the new normal um, and the new businesses practice that we face as we return to work and start to rebuild our tourism economy. Some of you took time to fill in the little introductory questionnaire we circulated, and that's sort of a taster of things to come um, and the new way of working. It was circulated as part of your registration process. And we, Connor and I thank you because it really helped us shape and prepare for the webinar today, just get a feeling of some of the experiences that were out there and some of the issues they, they face. So thank you for that. As we do the presentation today, you'll have the opportunity to ask us questions as we go through. Please use the chat function at the bottom of your screen under your Zoom settings. We will pick these up at the end and we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the, the presentation. So we'll turn now to, to look at the, um, the, the presentation itself. And Connor and I will be doing this uh, sort of as a double act today. Um, it's quite informal, but we'll, uh, we'll take you through the key points. The purpose of today's webinar, as we've said, it's really to understand the importance of domestic strategy for your business or your organization and the challenges we face in, the, in operating within the new normal. We know that today we're joined by Tourism business, we have a large um, proportion of council officers from across the, uh, across the province joining us and other people who are involved in cluster development and working with those small businesses. We're going to demonstrate today how the domestic strategy and this new action planning process which we'll take you through, how that relates to the key Northern Ireland recovery initiatives that are ongoing as well. We're going to really unpack and share in a bit more detail the new approach to action planning. And this has been specifically designed to, to take the strategy and bring it to life at an industry level. Then we'll finish by setting out the next steps and how you can really further engage in this process with us. So the new normal that we're all getting used to, and it really forms a, a context to our action planning process today. What are we looking at? First of all, I'll take you to, um, to some of the, the, when we put together this slide, these slides today for you, what is the importance of the domestic market for you? The audience in the webinars, we, we know many of you will be operating live today and will be, it'll be viewed many times in the weeks and perhaps months ahead. You're coming to this with a variety of aims and goals. You may be a business who needs to enhance the offer for an established domestic market. You've already been operating in this in the domestic market for many years. This is the new normal for you. You may be a business that's had an international visitor focus for, for quite some time. Suddenly you find that need to pivot in the short term for cash flow to for business sustainability reasons. That's a whole new different uh, business goals, business model that you have to adopt. It could be, as I've said, you're coming from an organization, whether it be a council or a cluster across Northern Ireland, who work with the, the businesses on a day-to-day -day level. And you really understand that need to work collaboratively, to harness this domestic market, to really drive that local visitor economy forward. So we, we, we took uh, this on board as we started to develop the action planning process. So when we looked at some of your submissions to date and some of, in working with the, the local tourism businesses across Northern Ireland, some of the challenges that we know that you're facing, this ability to operate an immersive experience commercially, um, and we'll talk a lot about that today, the commercial viability of all this within these new guidelines that have been presented to us in the last few weeks. 
there'll be a, a large degree of uncertainty about future visitor numbers, people coming back to your experience or your accommodation or attraction, how you'll deal with that, as well as the issues around reduced capacity as a result of the guidelines themselves. This will affect your, your planning, your staffing levels, furlough issues come into, into play here. All those business planning measures will have to come into account as we, we move forward to even addressing the domestic market and marketing planning. We know all this has had a severe impact on cash flow. This will affect your ability to, to, to spend a lot of money on, on marketing going forward. It will be for many of you shoestring budget or, or nothing at all through just using digital and your immediate marketing channels. The big issue of return and marketing investment will face all of us, either large or small, as we move forward to the next weeks and months. Uh, every spend, every, every investment made will have to be shown to, and demonstrate a clear return. For many of you, this will involve a full review of the business model that you've currently been operated, whether this be the short, the medium, and indeed the longer term. So this understanding of some of the challenges that you face has really underpinned all of our thought process so far. So the, the new normal, you'll have all seen, um, it's, it's, for many, it's our Bible as we move forward, the, the Northern Ireland guidance. The uh, working safely during COVID-19 in the visitor economy, it's been with us for a few weeks. It feels like it's been part of that process, working process for, for some time. It's accompanied by two specific sector documents, uh, the first round hotels and tourist accommodation, and the second uh, focusing predominantly on hospitality, whether it be restaurants, pubs, or takeaways and bars. Beneath this, as many of you will be aware, there's a raft of sector-specific guidance um, available, and wading through that has been part and parcel of our daily lives in getting to the reopening phase. We took many of you through a series of webinars in the last week, really unpacking and, on, and looking at the specific issues around the, the guidelines and reopening. Set against this, we have a number of consumer trends that we've all been, uh, been subject to over the last months with the, the lockdown. Some of these show no sign of abating as we, as we start to, to come out of lockdown. We've seen, uh, for many, um, very welcome the focus on the local economy again, especially around the whole food and drink, provenance, sustainability have all come back into, um, into our, our sphere of thought as we've taken, got our takeaways, we've looked for unique food and drink experiences in the, the lockdown period. And that's been something that, again, the, the trends both here across the UK and universally really show no signs of abating. For us, environment and sustainability has come again to, to the forefront as, we, as we've taken in uh, the nature, as we, get, we got out on our hourly walks um, across the lockdown period. That became, again, a focus for thought, not only here in Northern Ireland, but globally. Health and well-being, um, the, the, the shortage of bicycles, the walking, everything, again, focused on our immunity, our health and well-being, and as we move out of lockdown, that is certainly translating in visits to hairdressers, anticipated spa treatments. Um, that is certainly something that we'll be looking forward to in the weeks and months ahead. Who can have forgot the family and friends uh, issue as we, we all locked down together and we, got, we, we, we fought, we made up um, and we really tried to, to uh, address that really important feature of family and friends and how important that came to, it became to many of us. As I said, the reconnection with nature is something that we will see translating as we move out of lockdown. Uh, as we look and you'll see that the sentiments and the consumer trends around walking and hiking and, and the, the great outdoors. There may be more trends that are specific to your sector uh, that you're operating in that you are aware of and will be important as you move forward in your planning scenarios. So the consumer sentiments, Tourism Northern Ireland and Fulcher Ireland have got together to, to really monitor this quite, quite um, specifically over the last number of weeks and months. It comes out about once a fortnight. There's another consumer sentiment survey due tomorrow. Um, so we would encourage you to, to take a look at how consumer sentiment has been changing. Some of the key points that we pulled out that relative to, to this 
uh, session are the important reasons for taking a trip. What was coming out um, in the last survey, which uh, is related up to the 3rd of June. The, to relax and unwind clearly was a, a prominent reason for taking a trip. That's what people wanted to, to do. They wanted to escape, they wanted to get away from it all, and they wanted to have fun. And the great food and drink issue was certainly predominantly in their thoughts. What we saw from the consumer sentiment piece was that there, was people, there were people planning to take a break. The figures showed us that of those considering a short break in Ireland, two out of five in Northern Ireland specifically planned to do this over the next six months. And August and September looked like the uh, most appropriate months to, to do that in the sentiment. Really, the shoulder season uh, for, for many of us will be an important one to think about as we move forward in the domestic market planning. What we did uh, discover through the consumer sentiment is this looking has not necessarily translated to booking at this stage. And that's an opportunity for many of us uh, uh, small businesses today. So what do they want to do when they, they get, uh, out, get to their, their short break? This is where the, the great outdoors came through most strongly, the walking and hiking over 51% um, said that was part, a predominant part of their, their trip and their planning of their trip. We looked at what, uh, where they wanted to go. And again, the outdoor scenarios, the outdoor attraction featured strongly, nature reserves, national parks, historic houses and castles, gardens, swimming, all those sorts of things most strongly um, as the, the, the tables show. We also looked at the, the food element, visiting a farmer's market as markets start slowly and surely coming back into um, our normal daily life. Looking at food producers, that education element, and you'll see when we start to talk about the family market, that becomes very, very strong. Recovery marketing plan. Again, these are one of the, the initiatives that's running really strongly along what the domestic market strategy um, and action planning uh, process will be about. Many of you will be aware of it. We'll start to show from here on in some of the graphics that, um, that, that this plan will, uh, will, will be using as in the weeks and months ahead. The marketing plan is all about inspiring people to staycation, to stay at home, to, to, to discover more about their own home area. Very much bringing back the whole issue and uh, the, the, the brand, the experience brand, embracing the giant spirit, tweaking for the new normal. You'll see, if you're familiar with the giant spirit branding, the fonts, the imagery, the, the approach is, is very, very similar and will take us through uh, the next 16 week marketing period. Some of the straps that are being used, epic fun without the epic trek. It's not how far, but how far, it's about how fun. Um, obviously, they uh, capitalizing on family um, markets. Many of you will have already your application in or will be considering in the next round the whole idea of support for your marketing around the cooper cooperative marketing fund that's been uh, introduced and how you can get support um, for your, your marketing planning. The whole idea of market at the marketing plan is to highlight the well warmth of the welcome the world-class food and drink, the landscapes that we uh, exist in, and those all-important immersive experiences. Many of you will also be familiar now with the, um, the, very, the, the safety focus um, in your planning and how you communicate and build that confidence among consumers. The good-to-go industry standard, the standard that's operating in Northern Ireland and in other parts of the UK, is now readily available. And um, to date, when we looked at this yesterday, well over 360 businesses had started to download that particular standard um, in terms of how they could communicate that all important message to the, to the uh, consumer. Consumer research will indeed inform the marketing tactics. So the, the consumer sentiment pieces that you'll be uh, become familiar with every two weeks will really, really drive and dictate the marketing tactics adopted. It will be a mix of digital, outdoor, radio, press, TV, um, and supported and underpinned by PR and media visits over the, the 16 week period. This is about creating the best prospects for immediate 
bookings. This is a, um, a carousel, one of the, um, the, the images that we, we have for, for social media and other things. Epic fun without the epic trek coming along, featuring some of our immersive experiences, some of which have joined us today for this webinar. Okay, I'm going to pass this over to, to Connor um, to take you through and just recap slightly on the, the important elements of the tourism, domestic tourism strategy document. Thanks, Sharon. Um, so some of you may have been uh, exposed to some of this material from the previous webinar, um, but we're going to go through some of it again at a high level because it's obviously important to cover off. Um, one of the first things to say is, is, um, what is what's our ambition? And although this ambition was kind of drafted pre-COVID, um, it still is relevant as is a longer term ambition up to 2030. So the overall intent is, you know, not insignificant growth within the domestic market, 24% in terms of trips and 31% in terms of spend. So the ambition is to really have a slow and steady kind of growth rate, a very solid uh, foundation that continues to build over time. And the logic for in that is, is that we don't necessarily uh, anticipate in the, in the longer run, maybe in the near term, any particular major spikes in domestic tourism, but the real job at hand is to really, really um, consolidate it, build it and grow it. So it's a very, very robust based. And that's particularly important, obviously, because um, there is a high level of uncertainty into the future. Inter -mar international markets may come back strong. There may be speed bumps along the road. Um, and therefore, one of the key, the key pillars that we've got to really focus on is a very strong, robust, reliable uh, domestic market that, uh, that may well act as a spine uh, for the industry itself. Um, and if you were, at the other, were on the other webinar, you would have seen as well that you know, there is significant opportunity in terms of driving value. So all the figures would indicate that value growth is really there. So we can grow volume in terms of nights and volume in terms of actual visitors. Uh, but the real opportunity as well alongside that is, is, to, is to generate more revenue, more margin and more value out of that. So again, at a high level, and thankfully you won't have to listen to me too much, we'll, we'll share some video content with you. When we did segment the market, one of the big questions that sits in behind the strategy is, you know, who, who ultimately we are targeting? I mean, that's the first piece of market analysis that anybody would do to be really, really clear about your future intent. So we did a quite a robust piece of work, both on a qualitative research basis and a quantitative research basis. The quantitative came first to really define the market, understand who was present, uh, the, the kind of the total universe of consumers. And we looked at it really on more psychographics and needs and motivations. So probably the older way of doing segmentation is to do it by demographics and make the assumption that Everybody who's of a certain age and of a certain social class and a certain gender generally is similar, but that's really not true anymore. Um, you know, people who are in their late 50s can have very strong or very similar attitudinal points of view to people in their mid 30s. Uh, so it just doesn't stack up that uh, demographics would do that anymore. So what we tend to do in segmentation these days is to really try and understand what is it that people are interested in? What are they passionate about? What motivates them? What are the key things that their decisions hinge upon? Uh, and out of that kind of approach, you get a much more textured view on, on the segments and the consumers that exist. So when we did that work and we, you, you apply the science to it in terms of start to cluster uh, certain segments, we determined there were six segments. Uh, and out of those six, we've determined there are kind of three priority segments. But at a high level, we've got uh, six segments. The first being the comfort seekers, most likely to say, you know, uh, I know what I like, I know what I want, and I know what I like. So they're very, they're very sure of what they want. But what they tend to do is they're slightly older, and they tend to do is go back and do formulaic things, the same things again and again and again. Uh, they don't want a massive amount of diversity or, or change. And also the economic profile of this particular segment isn't super, so they don't spend a whole lot of money, they don't spend it, they don't take a whole lot of trips. The second segment uh, we call pragmatists because of these out of all the segments are really kind of objective, kind of pragmatic type people who really weigh up the experience, the offer with the value for money proposition and some functional dimensions. So they don't get uh, influenced by the sizzle. They're very grounded, uh, very pragmatic about where they go, when they go, how much they spend, what they do. Um, and as a consequence, to a certain degree also, this segment wouldn't be of a huge, in terms of relative to the other segments, isn't, isn't of huge economic worth. It's not to say they're unimportant, but again, uh, they, don't have, they don't have the same spend profile as other segments. The third segment, which is almost a third of the market and is a real mainstay in the core, we call aspiring families. And these are, you know, your core family segment that most people will be very, very familiar with. But a key dimension to this is, is this is, you know, the, 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 these families, they are very much focused on what happens with their kids between in the relationships between parents and kids while they're on their breaks. So they see 
breaks and holidays as key platforms to move beyond the normal relationships with their kids, their kids and build high quality relations through, through the experiences. And therefore, any industry uh, member, whether it be a hotelier, an experience operator, a festival, mount runner, whatever it might be, that can really add value into family relationships is held in very, very high regard. The key thing here as well is, is that these are, you know, they, they look for a bargain and they look for value. But the interesting thing here is, is that they're not afraid to spend premium on premium experiences. So if something's good, it's often worth it. And what that links back into is, you know, I have, good, I have this little opportunity to be with my kids in another way than I'm not usually with them. I don't mind spending the money if we can have a fantastic experience in a fantastic place and then have a, bond, a bonding experience that really is something we remember for, for, for years to come. The fourth segment at 14%, uh, we call the short break enthusiasts, a very interesting segment. Very passionate about travel, all about discovery and, and new experiences. But as a consequence of this, we found that they had a very uh, low tendency to consider or want to take breaks in Northern Ireland. So they want to go further afield. So these were high, high indexing on going overseas, having new experience, traveling abroad. And therefore, you think automatically people who love taking breaks, short breaks enthusiasts should be for us. And maybe in the near term, they can be. But in the long term, they're much more inclined to hop on a plane and leave Northern Ireland. The fifth segment, uh, natural quality seekers, is an older segment, they're 15%. Uh, and uh, this is, again, uh, a segment that actually economically is of good value. They're relatively affluent. And a couple of key dimensions here is, is that accommodation, quality accommodation, and location is hugely important. But also what anchors this segment is they're very, very interested in the outdoors and the natural environment, and they also have a strong sustainability agenda. So they enjoy breaks like anybody else, but they have these other added dimensions that are really, really important to them, which really provide potentially industry with a basis to, to create traction with them, to influence them, uh, and, and to uh, really drive them as customers. And the last segment we call social Instagrammers. This is the youngest segment, very different than any other segments, but they're going to be you know, mid-20s and pre-family, and they're much more in, uh, interested in energetic fun and entertainment and new experiences and urban experiences as well. Not to say they won't go in more rural destinations, but urban experiences are particularly uh, interesting and they're looking for the, the, the slightly unique and the slightly new. Uh, and again, they're of relative good economic worth. They travel as partners, but they also travel as groups of friends. So again, there's a kind of value value equation probably sitting within the segment as well. I think one of the things to say about this, there's a segments. I think before we go into some detail on, on, on this priority segments, I think there's a couple of key things to bear in mind. And that is, is that overall for the market itself, the domestic market, the Northern Ireland brand is strong. So it actually is seen quite positively, posit positively uh, as positively as a key competitor, uh, the Republic of Ireland, and has a stronger profile than Great Britain in terms of the degree to which it's attractive. Uh, and one of the key dimensions is value for money within that. It's not the only dimension, but it is a key dimension. So that's worth bearing in mind. But generally speaking, for all segments, they are interested, motivated, and think well of Northern Ireland as a short break and holiday destination. There's also, this is borne out by this good momentum. So the key metrics in terms of performance or in terms of consumer performance, being interested, having an intention, actually planning and actually going, have been improving for the last five years. So again, that's probably no surprise given the you know, continued improvement of product and experience and the accommodation stock, the quality of that, but there is good momentum there. And also communications, communications that have been put in place have had traction. But, but one of the big watch outs here is, is that not only do we need effective communications, we need a, a, an appropriate amount of communication. So uh, our marketing spend needs consideration because it, is, it, is, um, it, it, it may not be sufficient, especially relative to competitors in the shape of uh, Republic of Ireland. So again, we've got to make sure that our, we have well-resourced well communications and we're very precise uh, and uh, compelling communications. So when we looked at it, we prioritized three segments and those three, three were the natural quality seekers, aspiring families and social Instagrammers. And why they were prioritized were, were a couple of reasons. First of all, you know, uh, one of the key dimensions is that there was a significant amount of them. So this constitutes 60% of the market or two thirds of the market. So we're not leaving, you know, massive sways out. So there is a significant volume of all of these customer segments. The second piece is, is that they were of good economic value. So you can have a large segment, but if they spend very little money, then they're not very much used to or value to. All of these segments perform, uh, demonstrate, you know, a high propensity to spend money when they're on their short breaks uh, domestically and internationally, and therefore they're of good value. The other key thing is as well is, is that um, they have relatively good perceptions of Northern Ireland already. And therefore, while they not, mightn't be quite low-hanging fruit, 
they are susceptible. They are already somewhat motivated by the idea of taking, you know, a staycation or a domestic break. So what you have here is key dimensions. And that's just generally speaking, but also relative to competitors as well. We live in a competitive environment. So the thinking here in terms of driving uh, prioritization is what you're looking for is, is the segment big enough? Are they the right economic value? And are they relatively well disposed before, toward Northern Ireland already? Now, with the answer being yes to all of those three questions, then the onus is upon industry and agency and council and whoever it might be to say, okay, this is, a, this is an opportunity. Let's go and, uh, and realize it. And the way it means to realize it is obviously having an insight and understanding into their motivations, their behaviors, their media uh, uh, channels, and all these sorts of things, the experience they, 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 that appeal most to them. And say, okay, they're, they're there. We can find them. Uh, let's go out and influence them. Because, you know, communicating and then delivering fantastic experiences, obviously, where the, where the rubber hits the road. But making the right decisions and taking the right actions that precedes actually uh, getting, getting the consumer to come and stay or visit is critically important. Okay, so looking at inspired families, I won't go, I, I might let the video do the work. I've talked about these slide, slightly already. Large segments, highest annual spend, about £1,300 per annum. Uh, strong family focus. They do a lot of research. The reason they do that is they want to guarantee a great experience. They're into all sorts of activities. Uh, so they like to do, do lots of diff different sorts of things. So they don't want a sedentary kind of quiet kind of experience. They do pay, pay attention to price and they're seeking value but they're not afraid to pay for quality if it's worth it, as I kind of mentioned already. And obviously the other key thing here is, is that they need activities to kind of suit the children uh, as well as the family as a whole. So it can't be exclusively for mom or dad, nor can it be exclusively for kids. It's the collective offering. Uh, you know, as you'd expect, the demographics, 35 to 44, kind of even social class bit, and obviously they're much, much likely to have younger children as well. Okay, so I think we can share a little video that will give a little bit of colour to them now. So for us it's really a big family trip. It's really important to spend quality time with the kids. We're both crazy busy and we both work a lot. We try to fit in as much as possible. We usually keep an eye on online deals. We have three young kids, you know. Uh, we don't mind splashing out in the cash. It can be worth paying that little bit extra just to have everything we need. Really what we're looking for is a bit of fun and adventure. We're looking for places for lots of things to do for the kids and us, things we can do together. Wherever we stay, it must be child friendly. That's obviously very important. Somewhere comfortable with a nice bit of food and drink too. It helps to have organised activities for us all to enjoy together. Sometimes we like to meet up with other families and we like to have food and drinks for them also. Wherever we stay, it's just a base after the touring throwing of the day. We love going out to the coast and summer scenic too. The kids love water parks and go-karting and all that crack. So yeah, it's really all about squeezing as much as possible. The time is so valuable for us, we like to make the most of it. Okay, so this is, a, again, a relatively large segment, and you'll see um, a couple of key important things with respect to this segment. So some of the stuff we've kind of mentioned already, you know, quality of accommodation, very, very important. They're looking for good quality accommodation. They don't mind paying up necessarily for it, and that's about quality accommodation, but also location accommodation. Um, big nature lovers really enjoy the outdoors, really love the natural environments and some soft adventure attached to that. So they, have a, they want to be outdoors, they want to experience the outdoors, and they have a preference here for gentle activities. So they're not up for high octane sort of things, but walking and hiking and certain things like that, very much motivating and interesting to them. Sustainability, very important as well. So they want to not only be in a place that's beautiful, but also know that that place is being protected and cared for from an environmental and a heritage point of view. So again, pulling on those kind of credentials uh, within offerings and within communications is important, is likely to have traction. They like they, they enjoy planning and they're likely to have clear itineraries. So the more in any communications or any interactions, we can support them to really think through what they were doing when they're on their break, how they'll be enjoying it, how it'll all be knitted together, both in terms of experiences, in terms of environment, in terms of the food and drink, all these sort of dynamics uh, is really, really important. The good spenders, about little, little under 1,300 euro. In fact, they're the, high, the second highest spender uh, of, all, of all segments. And it's interesting in that the family segment is going to probably maybe cater for four individuals if people have two children. This is just two individuals nearly in, in most instances. As you might anticipate, they're older, uh, you know, average age of 55. They're of a higher social class. And because of their age profile, um, they have older children. We love to get away, get some fresh air in our lungs and see some nice sights. I suppose with that in mind, we like to treat ourselves and stay somewhere comfortable, somewhere where we can really relax. We like to make sure that wherever we stay, we'll have a good base and lots to explore nearby. We love a really good deal, a bit of value, but ideally we want to stay somewhere of a high standard, so we'd usually opt for a nice hotel. 
preferably one that's eco-friendly. We love to get a sense of the local people and places, the culture in a genuine way, you know, and we'd have a detailed plan of what we're doing before we go. Maybe things that we would usually go and see would be your sort of natural scenery, maybe take a wee hike, but nothing too taxing. We're quite outdoorsy, really. We love a good view, whether it's a nice beach or a nice forest or whatever. And we love a good meal in the evening and a nice bottle of red. Sometimes we'll try to get away with family and friends. There's usually a bit of back and forth with them about the places to go. A friend or a neighbour might suggest somewhere that they've been to recently, and we might decide to check it out. That's always worked out pretty well for us. But we'll have a good Google before we book anything. We love to get away with in Northern Ireland. Sure, it's great to be able to hop in the car. Nice to go back to some places too. It's great when you head to the local pub and the owner might remember you and you can have a bit of a chat. It's the small things like that. Okay, so that's our uh, natural quality seeker. So hopefully you start to get a sense of them. And I, I would say as well, obviously, within the strategy document, there's uh, more detail within that as well that we have to read into and try and understand the segments um, as well. So the third priority segment, the final one, is uh, social Instagrammers. Again, a relatively large segment at 15%. And again, much younger, the youngest segment, you know, you know, 18 to 24 is really, and maybe also 25 to 34 is much less likely to have children and also more slightly more likely to be female. What they're after here is really buzz and atmosphere. That's what they're really after. But they would say um, that within that, you know, seeking nightlife and great pubs and activities and energy and meeting people is very important. Um, short breaks are important to them, a big important part of their lives. What they want is new experiences, one abroad on their mind, meet new people, have new experiences, enjoy new food, be in new places, have new conversations. Um, as you'd anticipate as well, uh, connectivity very important to them. So being online, both in terms of being able to gather information while they're on a break, but also be able to contribute information, whether it be through Instagram or Facebook uh, or whatever it may be. So that connectivity dimension is very important. So fundamentally, some things like, you know, very good Wi-Fi within accommodation is important to them uh, and small things like that. More likely to use Airbnb, as you'd anticipate as well. Um, uh, so that's a bit maybe because of the generation that they come from in particular. But again, that's worth bearing in mind in terms of this overall segment and how they behave when it comes to searching and booking and, and extracting value from them. Um, they, one of the key things here as well is, is that they will spend money on accommodation, but they're inclined to really have a balanced approach to accommodation and what they might then call spending money. So, uh, you know, maybe it's, it's a bit maybe, maybe better off going a little bit more budget for the accommodation, make sure it's nice and pleasant, but then it'd be able to have, have the money then to spend really on great food, great entertainment, great drink, great nightlife, or great experiences during the day. So that's our kind of social Instagrammers there. So I like to get away as much as I can and I love a wee city break. I just love travel in general. Like I just think it's great to experience new things and to just like open up your mind. I suppose I like places that are a bit edgy and cool with a wee bit of a funky vibe. I just love when there's loads going on and there's a real like buzz about the place. Like sometimes I see a place on Instagram and I'm like, oh, I really want to go there. It would need to be somewhere that's good for like a night out anyway. Loads of pubs and clubs. Oh, and somewhere with really great food, but not like a total rip off. So sometimes I go away with my boyfriend at the weekend or I go away with the girls and we get a really nice Airbnb or stay in a cool hostel. It's just great to just get away and just have a bit of crack for a couple of nights. And sometimes we go to a place where there's a festival on or like a wee spa weekend. And if the weather's good, it's nice to go somewhere where there's like a nice beach. So yeah, we try to take the bank holiday off and go away together. I don't mind if the accommodation isn't that nice because I'm usually like up and about all day anyway and then I'm out again at night. If it's nice, like that's a big plus, but I'd rather spend my money on activities for the day and the evening. So during the day, I like to fit in as much as possible. So we'll go shopping, we'll go on a wee tour and then we'll spend the rest of the day wandering around the city and taking nice pics. So usually when I get back, I'm completely wrecked. So I almost need another holiday to get over the holiday that I've just been on. So that's kind of a, a sense of the segments. That's key, obviously, to all thinking and, and, and all planning and all steps we take because the consumer lies at the center of all that we do. Um, so more moving over to action planning, you know, so now we have that information, we have the strategy, it's kind of time to start doing. Um, and there's planning and sales resources in place. And what we're trying to put in place here as well is to really enable broad participation. 
uh, with the for, with strategy. So it really can be of value to all parties. And really it is, it, it helps inform decision-making, inform investments, inform the action taken. So there's high impact for all the things that are done uh, and no wasted resources at all. In terms of strategy for growth, um, there's four, four kind of key pillars and uh, we'll talk about these in a little bit more detail. So at the heart of it is, is effective communications is one, is one element. So obviously we need to be able to, if we understand the consumers, we need to be able to reach them properly. So being able to communicate and have resonance is, is, is hugely important. Alongside that, obviously, is about, you know, if we is having compelling experience and attractions and events, not only to communicate in terms of um, uh, encouraging people to come to various destinations throughout uh, Northern Ireland, but also to deliver on our promise. So obviously, from a brand perspective, if we are well uh, perceived and we can influence people to, to spend money, we have to be sure that we can deliver really super experiences, deliver great exp- uh, attractions through and, and great events. And... Uh, Beyond that, there's a, there's a big dimension in strategy around the citizen, citizen and community engagement. So the more that we can get people within local communities and, and people, citizens and residents throughout uh, Northern Ireland to really buy in and be part of the tourism ecosystem and play a part in it, the better. And um, that'll really support a very vibrant uh, and healthy domestic, uh, not only domestic, but broader uh, tourism offering. Uh, and last but not least, in the mode that we're in currently, the key pillar of strategy is about industry and stakeholder engagement. So we're better, uh, better all, uh, the sum of the parts really is what needs to come together here in terms of really landing uh, with the particular segments in the domestic market. We may have some single successes, but really it's about collaboration through various industry parties, partners, uh, but also agencies, council. So the more that we can, we can get, a, get a collective effort and a combined effort, uh, the greater chance I think there is of really succeeding and having resonance within the domestic market. Thank you very much, Connor, for that um, whiz through what is a very detailed piece of work. And again, um, as Connor has said, refer you to the strategy document itself and the previous webinar for further details on that. I'm going to take you through uh, what happens next um, and how we start to, to develop the, the action planning process. And it's a slightly different approach to one that you may have seen before. Um, and we're really going to look at the, the digital component of all this. So basically, after the, uh, the webinar today, um, you will receive an email and we'll take you through the process in more detail at the end of, uh, at the end of, of this section. But you will be invited to, to go online and complete a, a form. Uh, there, there's a, a dedicated web page that will be the, the, really the, the hub of everything going forward. For those of you um, who may be familiar with the the plans to to really address the whole digital uh, sphere across Northern Ireland tourism, whether it be for the consumer market itself uh, around the Discover NI uh, side of of the the, the equation, and also the the side that for yourselves as businesses or as as councils and people involved in tourism development, the new uh, industry hub that's being developed what we're really doing here today is showing you the, the building blocks for that, the, the groundwork, the, the, sort of the, the start of the data collection and how you will eventually start to engage in this uh, digital transformation as it starts to, to roll out. So at the minute, we're, um, that's all been done behind the scenes as we, as we speak. Um, and we're starting to, to feed into that. So although we may not be quite there with the, the digital wizardry and technology that exists, we are capturing the information and will allow you to avail of that in, um, in the weeks and months ahead. So when you complete the, the webinar today, um, your email will direct you to, to basically this, the, the homepage of this screen that just sets out what the domestic market is really all about for, for, for us. And it's about supporting businesses and developing that clear roadmap going forward. As we've stressed throughout this, it's about assisting you to develop a really compelling visitor proposition that most of all is market ready, that's sellable, bookable, and will bring you um, business in the, in the weeks and months ahead. Our key objective, as, as Connor has alluded to, is to, to get a, a proposition, an exp- a selling proposition that's price sensitive for that domestic market for whichever segment you're going for, but most importantly for you is commercially viable and sustainable for over the longer term for you as businesses. And that's something that we will focus on predominantly for you in this particular market, particularly if you're pivoting from an international market, really considering those pricing elements for this specific element of the, the market. 
So as I've said, this will feed into the, um, the, the domestic tourism, the business hub as it develops. So what you'll see as you go um, into the, uh, and drill down across the page is this stage one application. This is about data collection, first and foremost. We'll start to capture your business details going forward, all those personal, your personal contact details, start to build a profile of you as a, as a business. So you'll drill down through those pretty self-explanatory um, processes and fill in the details. Once you've completed that, um, and you will have to complete that to move to, to the next stage of the process, it is really, really important that we, we start to build a profile of who's out there and, and what stage they're at. When you filled in the stage one the application, then you will be invited, if you filled in all your, your, um, your, your sections, to download the action plan itself. And this is a document that will help you step by step, and I'll take you through in the, the short time we have what is quite a detailed process. I would highlight actually for those council people joining us today, those people involved in, in cluster development like myself, and others who are actually facilitating or mentoring groups of businesses across Northern Ireland. We are really depending on, on you. As Connor has said, this is a collective effort. Um, it will, it, it's involving tourism Northern Ireland in the lead, but we really, really do need the support of everyone in Northern Ireland, whether they be businesses or the support agencies working with them. So do, if you are one of these agencies or bodies, do encourage your businesses to start to engage in this process, to, to let us capture the information, to start to work through the action planning process that we're going to take you through and really, really let's build momentum here. And this is something that can be shared. We all know working collaboratively has great results when businesses start to share amongst each other good practice and ideas and bounce off each other. And what a momentum and exciting uh, environment that can lead us to. And that's basically, the, um, the, in a nutshell, what we're trying to achieve here. What I'm going to do, and it's really uh, moving on from Connor's strategy, what he's taking you through, and the, the idea of the, the four pillars. We're going to spend some time now really just going through the pillars and how you start to, to complete the action. The template itself has been designed to give you lots of pointers, lots of tips along the way, lots of considerations that you need to take into account for your own particular business. And we'll start to, to show and flag up some of these. I would say that the document itself has much more detail than we have time to, to go through today. And what we've tried to do here is to use the the strategy document itself, both webinars, um, the, the strategic one that Connor delivered uh, in last week and also this one today as, as background information. So you start to, to, to build um, an, a, a pool of information. We've also referred to the, the other help that's out there from research, market trends, all the other things that you need to be aware of. And I'm sure like me, as you viewed some of the, the videos when we looked at what those key priority segments wants, and you, you, you looked at them and say, well, they actually can't go to a pub at the minute. The pubs are closed. Um, I know up here we can't walk on the Carrickareed roadways just yet. That's the, what the, the market needs. Our conundrum facing many of the businesses here today is how do we effectively meet those needs given the guidelines that we're operating under? We know as lockdown progresses, um, with all things being well, that that will release further and other things will come on stream and op opening up may allow us to uh, address other opportunities. So the whole idea of using a more digital environment is, is uh, to allow you to react to these changes that will come over the next week and months, to update, to reflect, to use the guidelines, to work with your staff, and we'll talk about those um, as we, we go through the process. So basically, what the way we're going to handle this bit is we will look at some of the priority considerations. I'll kick off with some of the things from a Northern Ireland perspective, and then we'll get Connor just to, to pitch in um, after each one with some of the things that he's picked up in his research and strategic overview of everything. So we've talked about effective communications, how vitally, vitally important they are. And when you come to consider your own action plans, there's a number of considerations and points that we want you to think about. Obviously, you've got to think really carefully using all the information that we've provided and, uh, to you. What segment does my current product experience most appeal to? 
And we've talked in, uh, at, at length in both sessions and you can read further at your own leisure about their passion points, their motivations and their needs and their requirements. We tried to enliven that for you with the, the videos today. I've given you a sort of a personal pick of what these, uh, this particular, these particular segments are looking for. Then we're asking you to think, uh, think really carefully about which elements of your current product experience address these key passion points and motivations. So it's about linking, as Connor had said, the, the, the markets, the, the segments with what you can actually do. And we'll talk in the, the next slide about how you enhance that and, and address that. But you've really got to think about what you've currently got and which that relates to the segment that you want to aggressively go after. We all know too that in this competitive environment that we're going into, uh, Northern Ireland will be competing with a, in a, the most competitive market it's perhaps ever seen as every part of the, the UK and Republic of Ireland really tries to, to steamroll ahead and really uh, reopen the market and get the tourism market back on, on stream. So we're going into what we know will be a com hugely competitive situation. So it's not just about how you operate as an individual business and your unique and immersive experience, brilliant as that, as that may be. What we are looking for here is for you to consider that in the context of your, your region, of your destination, your visitor destination. So what about, is it about your product experience that has the capacity to excite this priority segment? How can we draw visitors to your particular area or destination, not only to visit your own experience, but to stay longer in your own uh, visitor destination? That's got to be key, and it's part of our competitive focus going forward. The communications uh, platforms, which ones will offer the best means to, to reaching this priority segment? We'll ask you to, to, um, to think really carefully, to really drill down about which communi communication platforms you're currently using, whether that be digital, your social media, um, your own website, how you are communicating and how does that re uh, relate to the, um, the, the target market that you're, you're looking at? Really what we're looking at you to, to say and be very objective and, and very clear about this, what are the most effective communication channels in terms of driving sales? That's the key um, monitor and, and evaluation that technique that we're looking for to hide it. Not is it going and is it necessarily getting likes if it's on social media or followers? Does it translate to sales and, and bookings? That's the key, key uh, focus that we're looking for here across your communication channels. And when you get into the, the template itself, you, get, you will get a lot of help and guidance on, the, on which areas to, to look at, digital, direct, indirect. So what should you be doing more or less from a communications perspective? What we'll do, and for those of you who are probably um, about to, to leave in terror at this stage, at the end, we'll, we'll actually come back to how we... Uh, we pull together and we address your training needs analysis. If this is something you say, I need help, I know that now. So don't, don't panic at this stage. We'll pick that up at the end of the presentation. So once we've had a good hard look at our communications and our, the channels that we're using, we'll then relate that back to what Connor has called in the, the strategy and the pillar around compelling experience, attractions and events. The key objective here is to build out and improve these new existing tourism experience attractions and events as they come on on stream. So some of the action plans that we're actually looking you to consider here is what additional product or experience elements do I need to develop in order to really, really win that priority segment? Where's my gaps? Where's the gaps in my current uh, experience? We then want you to consider the duration of your product experience. And the strategy itself really points to the need to, to build half day, days, and actually ideally the whole idea of the 36 hour experience or even longer. The overnight stay um, as building that, to capturing the person to stay in your, your destination, your region, to avail of your experience and travel to other uh, experiences and offer and that's where the collaboration comes in between businesses that will not happen if you working in isolation that will require you to to think differently perhaps for many of you who can you collaborate with and we'll cover that in the next 
um, in the next slides uh, specifically. So we're looking about looking at what your current duration of your product experience is, and most importantly, how we can develop that to encapture uh, people to stay longer. You've heard a lot about food and drink uh, throughout the presentation, how important that is and how it relates to the, the trends and the sentiment pieces of research. And we really want you to think as you're developing that, whether it's part of your own experience or attraction in itself, whether you offer that or whether you can team up with another restaurant. We've seen some very interesting things coming through with um, the whole idea of street food, of even picnics, uh, boat trips offering picnics. Again, thinking cleverly, thinking outside the box about what can I do within current government guidelines. Um, restaurants operating at reduced capacity, we know for many of the, the tour guides out there, it's, it's perhaps uh, more difficult. It requires a whole new operational procedure to take people indoors in the way that we once did, whether to visit a pub for a tasting or to have a sample menu in a particular restaurant that might not fit with their operational procedures. So how can we think creatively about enhancing that food and drink offering for um, the, the local food and drink? It relates back to the, the destination itself, the uniqueness of the destination. And we've seen the importance of bringing in producers and, and actually elevating the food and drink offering much, much more. That again uh, leads nicely into the whole idea of the nighttime experience. Something that we have looked at for many years in Northern Ireland, how we develop that, how we bring that to the whole overnight stay offering. If people are going to make the trip, uh, make that domestic trip, take that trip and uh, when we're competing against all the other parts of the, the UK in this particular environment, that nighttime experience will, could be the make or break. People are not going to come unless we can think creatively, given the guidelines of what we can do to make that stay enjoyable both during the day and into the evening um, and the next day. We've reiterated again the need um, for the product experience and how it sits within the wider destination context. Again, appealing to those uh, joining us today from the council environments, please do help your businesses think about this particular issue as they move forward in the next few weeks. How does it relate you know, they will maybe have um, not been au fait with your particular strategies, development plans, where it's coming together. So as we've underlined throughout this, this is where the collective push, the, co the collaborative working will really, really come into to its own. And we would urge the, the council and the other bodies that are joining in us today to, to really think about this particular aspect with the businesses. This will make the difference between a uh, standalone experience that, that may get some traction in the market or actually really driving significant business to Northern Ireland. We then move to, to look at the, um, the whole idea of the cost and pricing structure and in particular, your profit margins as businesses, a key, key consideration as we move through the next few months. We've got to demonstrate that it's commercially viable. You may need extra assistance as we go forward with how you cost that product. We, we know that you're operating in many cases with uh, reduced capacity, with a less volume. We've highlighted the need that you just don't know where the visitor numbers will come, when they'll come. We know that uh, currently we're operating probably in a wait and see environment when maybe many people are, are waiting before they take that first, uh, first foray outside. But we really need to, to make sure that your cost and pricing structure is commercially viable for you in the first instance. That will lead to your sustainability going forward. And also consider how it appeals to the specific target market you've gone for. And that's why we've sort of gone over um, some of the, the previous ground and why Connor has been able to demonstrate today. Think about the price points that that particular target market is operating on. You've heard some of the, the video uh, the, the videos when they talk about, yeah, well, accommodation's not that important because I'd rather spend my money on my, my uh, experiences during the day. Some of the target markets, yeah, they, they really want to want to splash out. So think about that in your overall cost and pricing structure. This relates again to the idea of collaborative working, um, which we'll come on to and how you work uh, with uh, others when you're considering your, your um, pricing structures. Back to the, the idea of citizens and community engagement, which really is, is quite novel and unique to this type of, of strategy and perhaps a new way of looking 
uh, at the whole idea of a, of a market and segmentation and, and how to involve the, the citizens and the community in your, in your business growth planning. It's, it's, a, it's something that I suppose over lockdown has come to the forefront when we consider the, the impact of communities of bringing visitors in. So no, no, at no time has this particular element been actually more important than in your consideration and your business growth going forward. Um, you know, we know that engaging with the community, building that resident engagement, actually stimulating that idea of pride and advocacy for Northern Ireland as a tourism destination, that would, is what will make us stand apart in, a, in what will be a very crowded marketplace. So what kind of things do we want you to consider here as you look at this particular pillar? Um, and it is a pillar because it will underpin so much of what else that you're doing. Because without this bit being right, the other bits will not necessarily stack up in the, the way that you would, you would wish. So you really need to consider for the first time, maybe how um, my business is connected to my local community. To what degree do I operate in isolation? Do, does my local community appreciate the value of tourism to our region? The reason why we're bringing visitors in, we all know that we're operating within that safe environment um, and we're, the, the, necessary to, the necessity, particularly now, to, to make sure your, your community is, is comfortable with this. But how can you in, harness that community appre appreciation? They know that it's important to their economy and what you're doing and your role within that. We'll ask you and we'll give you some pointers and the, the template will help you with this to some pointers on how you can leverage and improve your community connections, um, how they can contribute to that experience, whether it be word of mouth, their ambassadors on the ground, whether they go into the, the local shop, um, if you're, you're sending them to, for B&B &B or for something to eat, how you all work together to really, really elevate uh, the experience going forward. Many of you are already doing this, but for, you'll have to look again at local recruitment, training, how we can sustain that going forward, getting the locals involved economically and in the, um, the development of your business. For many, this might be um, one of the elements that you want to look at in terms of business sustainability, bringing in local volunteers. Consider I've, I've, some of the businesses that I've worked with have considered the intern program, bringing in students from local college and university to help that, to, to build that advocacy, to, to give them experience, but also to build those all important community links. Some of your work going forward may involve more time de uh, dedicated to talking to the local community groups, local resident groups, col uh, residents, colleges, students, bringing people onto your, um, into your experience by way of a farm trip, a familiarization trip to let them see exactly what you do. So they can be as a word of mouth and they can sell your experience going forward. So everybody in the community collectively working together. This leads, uh, leads quite neatly on to, to, this, to the other element of collaboration. And we'll look at the different, the different levels of this. Again, the strategy and the work that we're doing going forward really, really points to the need for industry collaboration around activity and development. The core objective is to collaborate and build connections at all levels. And we'll talk and we'll drill down to some of those levels in the next slide. But this is all about to ensure development and sustainable development of your domestic tourism offering. So what do we need to do and what are the levels that we're looking at? Some of the action plan points to consider. First of all, as we've alluded to quite a few times, the need to consider other local businesses that you can collaborate with. Who could you work with? Who's got a similar ethos, could add value to your current experience or attraction? How, can you, how will it enhance the overall appeal to your specific target market? And very important here, and this is back to um, sustainable good business planning, consider the exact nature of that involvement. That could be Informal, as it has been existing in many cases, you may, you may want to formalize that. Do consider how you operate in terms of actually the driving of sales and bookings, who's in charge of that, all sorts of um, regulations around who can, who can actually do it if you're creating a, a package, how you work with your, your operator if you're, if you're selling to an operator. So really, really don't just um, collaborate and join up with your, your nearest neighbor. 
look for businesses that can that do share an ethos, do share share a, a vision or an ambition to drive and, and collaborate with those to create that all important longer stay in your particular destination. We know that the, the other partners out there, there's local councils working very, very hard at the minute to drive the visitor economy. Um, we, we've seen other initiatives, maybe through the rural development partnerships, Invest NI are working a lot around clustering in this area. Which partners do you need to work with? Um, I sat on one of the task and finish groups um, as part of the recovery plan yesterday when we really got into this good discussion when collaborative working has never ever been more important than it is now and businesses needing support to develop more collaborations. Um, so that's something that you need to make yourself familiar with, the opportunities that are there, how you can get involved. That again um, points to, to the, um, the council uh, departments the, uh, the, and the funders and providers to really, really highlight that to the businesses that are going to be actively involved and want to per pursue this particular line of, of business. So really think carefully um, about the support and benefit they can bring to your particular business. We have um, alluded to, and there's a lot of information, to the whole idea of the indirect booking options um, that many of you are, are getting involved with, whether it be the OTAs, the online travel agencies such as booking.com, you really need to, to look at these, think carefully about the, the commissions as you're, you're working forward. But how are you going to drive those business to business booking sales as part of your overall business planning um, and, and your action planning going forward? It will require a cool, hard look, um, maybe a, a new approach to this particular area and think really, really carefully. And that's something that you might want to, to take and get more support and advice on. Again, how can Tourism Northern Ireland further support the developing and marketing of your product experience? There's been a number of initiatives that we've uh, covered today that are available um, through marketing support. There's a raft of information through the, the business support, the website hub, the webinars that have been taken part, uh, have been delivered over the last few weeks, and there will be more to come. And part of the work that we're doing will be to, to look and see what needs are there uh, for future development. There may be someone else that we haven't considered here in terms of an industry collaboration that is unique to your specific segment or your unique business. So certainly the action plan will allow you to really plot out all those relationships that you have within your particular environment. So once you've gone through um, what is uh, admittedly quite a lot of work, it will include you perhaps sitting with your, your staff um, to, 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 to consider this. All the way along, you'll be um, considering everything that's going forward alongside your all important risk assessment, which any of you who joined us for the webinars last week will be really au okay with and how the risk assessment develops continually over the weeks ahead, how you, you work with your staff, how you um, improve, you keep that, it's a living document. I suppose what we're seeing is this action planning process as a similar, a similar beast. It is a living, moving action uh, document that, it, that will never sit still. You should always be improving, reconsidering, adapting uh, to the opportunities and, and to guidelines and the, the new normal that we operate in. We will require you to, to be very objective here. We will look at a section. We'll, we'll, we'll ask you to consider how market ready is your product experience, having gone through those, um, those uh, previous steps that we've outlined. Is it an idea or a concept that um, you, you have your vision and your ambition? You, you've started to think about your target market. You've got your basic concept, your basic experience in place. You've maybe started to think about your partners but you still require further intervention and support to become a really viable, commercially viable proposition. And that's fine. What, that's what we want to, to, to get to. We want you to be very honest and very objective at this stage. You may have moved slightly further down that spectrum. You may be under development. You're, you're getting there. You're getting along that, um, that, that road, that road map, as we've called it. You maybe just require further support and additional support in specific areas that you've identified um, that could be around digital, it could be around routes to market. We'll, um, we'll show you how you identify those uh, slightly later. How you take that to become a viable proposition. 
Then we have the final stage, the market ready. Uh, that's the, the ideal stage that you want to be at. It's commercially viable uh, for you as a business. It's sustainable over the longer term. You've considered all your costings and your pricing. You're, you're sure. You've got proven sales challenges. It's working in the market. The, the market is reacting positively to, to what you've got. Um, and you've, you've got some evidence of that. And we are seeing some positive customer feedback coming through, whether that be TripAdvisor or other evaluation or your own feedback um, and your own uh, customer uh, surveying. That's important um, to, to see. So if you're at that stage, that's great. We can take you to a different level of marketing and taking that to, to the market. And we've started to explain, and we haven't time to go into it in a lot of detail, and there'll be future webinars to, to address this, how that leads into the, the whole new consumer-facing digital platforms that are being developed as we speak, and how you then link that into the industry hub and the whole idea of uh, what we ideally want to get to is you have a, a profile area for your business that you can update and update as you, you go along and you can see that change coming forward. So part of the, the template will allow you to look specifically at your business support and training needs going forward. So you having considered the, the, the other aspects of the um, that I've gone through today, you can start to identify and we have kept this to allow for the diverse nature of the businesses that we have going forward, um, that what, what the, the cluster of businesses may require. We've allowed this quite open-ended for you to really go drill down on what's important to, to your business. Um, we've considered things like business models and strategy routes to market, partnership and collaborative working element that we've uh, underlined. We've also talked about market research and consumer trends. Perhaps you just need more assistance on how to access these effectively um, for your particular site, your particular line of work. The whole, uh, whole gambit of pricing, costing and margins will be something that we know many of you will be particularly interested in. And the, the, the new changes around digital, uh, your own website, the, the wider um, websites across Northern Ireland and how they do, drill down to, to, a, to a local council level, that will be all something that will be moving very quickly over the next uh, few months alongside this particular process. You may require help with selling skills and meet the buyer training. Um, meet the buyer in Northern Ireland goes virtual for the first time at the end of the month. There, there will be an opportunity that will be the, um, the main way of working uh, for the foreseeable uh, virtual uh, meet the buyer time. You will see this um, going through uh, as, a, as a different way of doing business. You have even less time than a face-to-face, -face, maybe a different skills required. How you address that on a, on a, on a Zoom or a digital um, scenario maybe is slightly different to what you've been used to before. Um, the whole idea of content, imagery and storytelling will be so important. Your, your photography, your use of video, how you um, capture your experience in a, in a very succinct way, your elevator pitch, that type of thing is something that you may want to think. And you may have other specific to your particular business. Following this webinar, you will receive a follow-up email um, with instructions on how to download the action template. I showed you that slide at the beginning. Um, it's all going to be come to you. There, is, there will be provision for anybody that's actually viewing the webinar today on, uh, on, on record. Uh, there will be instructions on how to, to access the action template. But as, as I have reiterated, it will require a piece of work on your behalf to, to fill in the, uh, the, the stage one form to give us some, uh, some very general details of who you are, what you're about and your experience going forward. That is important and that will allow you then to move to, to stage two. Um, so that does require complete, uh, the, the full completion of that stage. We'll encourage you to review the strategy document um, and both of the webinars that we've gone through, uh, this one and uh, Connor's one earlier on. There will be an onus in you at the minute to, to consider the, the research. Um, we've, we've gone through that today, both from a Northern Ireland context and even a local context and even a product context um, for many of you. The Northern Ireland guidelines, the sent consumer sentiment, the pieces that are coming out just this week, the market research will be very crucial. We'll make it available to you, um, but it will be uh, the onus will be on you to to start to to develop and familiarise yourself with that. 
We've alluded to the risk assessment process and how that will dovetail along with that, uh, with the, the, the market planning and how we can hopefully um, unlock future opportunities as we move forward in the, the lockdown process. And I would uh, actually refer you and keep abreast of the market recovery plan and Tourism Northern Ireland. Tourism Ireland will be moving into the, the marketing of GB um, very shortly. We have to be aware of, um, of that going forward. Likewise, we've said uh, on a number of occasions of the need to get business and marketing support available. Um, this can be from uh, at Northern Ireland level through Tourism NI or other providers, but very, very important is the need to, to dovetail the local support that's available. The, the local councils have really stepped up to the mark over lockdown and the whole pandemic period to offer uh, support to local businesses. And I think as we move forward to this recovery plan, I know the industry development team are really, really keen to work with the local councils, business support and tourism development uh, departments to, to really harness and and, and funnel and make sure that the, the right support is going to the businesses when they need them. Um, and that's something I know that Caroline and the industry's uh, development teams will be following up over the next uh, the number of weeks to, to bring together the councils to, to actually look at how this can be dovetailed and channeled more effectively to local businesses. So all that remains for you to do is complete the action plan template, the business support needs analysis that we've outlined. We know that this is um, uh, it, it will require some time and effort on your behalf, but we hope that what we've shown you today and when you get into the process that this will be um, something that will be useful and will be rewarded to you. So once you've considered that, um, in any, you, you will have be shown the instructions of how to upload that to a, a dedicated web page where it will be looked at and assessed going forward as to, as to the next steps for your particular business. Okay, um, before we move to, to some of the questions we have, and we'll pick up on any questions that have been coming through the, the chat as we've gone through. Connor, is there anything you want to, to add at this stage? No, nothing beyond that, Sharon. Uh, to be honest, I think uh, that was all very clear. Hopefully, um, the strategy itself and the segmentation was clear as well. And just to echo, you know, it's the supports and the focus of decision making and being clear about what actions should be taken really is, is the best. You know, that that needs to be focused on. I hope people feel they have the information that is required and, ha and are going to start to engage in the tools and uh, facilities that are there to really help uh, do that. So nothing more than that. Thank you, Connor. And uh, again, the, the, there's some written document. The strategy itself goes into lots of uh, extra uh, help and extra information that we just don't have time through the webinars to, to go into that kind of detail. But what, what should happen if, um, and this was something again that came back in uh, those of you that filled in the, the introductory uh, questionnaire and allowed us to sort of get a, a feel for the market. And what should you do if you further qu clarifications and questions? Um, what should you do? And there will be uh, support through the web page of how to either contact your the industry um, support development team um, led by Carolyn or indeed the experience development team um, under Rosemary Lightbody and, and that side of the Tourism Northern Ireland Department. So you will have access to those people uh, going forward. Um, if it's a specific uh, operational issue, um, you will be aware now if you joined, joined any of our webinars of the Industry Support Helpline. So if there's particularly operational procedures that you need as you're moving through the next few weeks, do use the helpline for that particular element. Um, it will give you expert advice on specific things of whether it's um, within the guidelines or whether there's a health and safety uh, issue to take into consideration or any legal or financial aspects. So, so do you do you use that uh, if there's anything particular that you, you want addressed? Another question that came through was the idea about well, okay, the Northern Ireland market is important, but there is other home markets for us to take into account here. There's the Republic of Ireland and also um, the GB market going forward. Uh, what will happen there is the Northern Ireland market has been the first one that we focused on today and in the months ahead as the, as the one that the, the, um, the research and the consumer sentiment is showing us but to have the most potential um, and the most propensity to actually convert to a trip. 
we will look uh, over the weeks ahead and we'll have similar webinars looking at the Republic of Ireland market and also GB um, uh, as well. So that, that's something that we, we hope by the end of this process that we've given you a full look at all your um, domestic markets um, that, that in terms of local uh, Republic of Ireland and GB and you have a, f- a full portfolio for your business of where those markets are, are, are useful to, to you. So you've gone through the, the process, you've stuck with it, you've um, completed your forms, you've done some serious uh, navel gazing and of your own businesses. Uh, and what, what happens next? What will be the, um, the, the, the output of that when your digital action plan is uploaded? As I've said, um, this will be, be looked at. Um, it will start to, to shape and form the full uh, industry development program, the tourism enterprise development program that uh, this webinar is part of today. So that's something that it it will be. It it won't just sit um, and sit there in isolation. I have explained how uh, eventually it will form part of the the digital hub. Um, The information that you um, send through eventually will form part of what will be an interactive profile area for your business. Um, we can get you set up on that as that comes through over the next few months. It's, it's not quite there yet, um, but that's something that we're working towards. And this process has been specifically designed to test that um, and, and, and make sure it's right for, for your business. So that's what the, the, um, the, this process that we put in together is all about. Um, it will lead to other, um, other initiatives. It will unlock the, the business support program. And as we said, we hope that this will lead to um, a, 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 co- a collaboration, a collective effort, not only from Tourism Northern Ireland and what the, the development teams are doing there, but actually then translating down to that more localised level with the local councils, with the clusters, um, and with even the, the community associations. And we know there's um, the rural development and other funders are also looking actively at their recovery plans and how they can support local businesses and local communities. So that's hopefully where all this goes to. And really that's all that we have from, from us. We've covered some of those, those questions. Um, we're looking, I'm just looking through the, the chat here uh, to see if what's coming through. Um, there's some questions just which we've covered about the, the process and, and where it leads to. Um, we have some, some question, a question there coming through from uh, a particular, it's related to actually someone interested in, in tour guiding um, and it's an operational, looking for some operational support. And I would again refer to you to a very interesting webinar that took place. It's available on record um, on, the, um, on the Tourism Northern Ireland website support hub, uh, particularly looking at operating in a tour guiding situation over the, um, the next few weeks and months. There's some specific guidelines in terms of sizes of groups, all those sorts of things are actually covered in, in detail there. So for that particular question, I would reflect, would, would encourage you to, to view that particular aspect. So that really brings us to the end of the, uh, this, the seminar today. So thank you for, for participating. All these webinars have been um, designed and presented as part of the Tourism Enterprise Development Programme. And I hope you've, um, you're not webinared out by this stage and have had a good, uh, uh, under, a good sort of appreciation of where the process goes from here. So we hope you find this session informative and of some use in your return to, to work planning. And we look forward to, to working with you again soon. Thank you for your support. 